good morning everybody uh, i shall be taking few doubt questions and certain questions which uh, which we have not taken up but they are more theory related so we'll be discussing few here also okay yeah so this is the first question i given some matrix and uh, there is some logical sequence to what figure or how do these figures come together okay and at the end, what you have to find is what will replace the question mark here. Which figure will replace the question mark here? Uh, we'll follow the same method. Please answer in the chat box and uh, we'll solve it together at the end. Okay. You're given options, you just have to choose from the option. Only one answer is possible in this case. Can we wrong answer? Ash, we wrong answer. Can we, uh, Anya, uh, wrong answer? <clears throat> it is surprising, but... Kushpo, correct answer. Uh, Ashwi, Mukshil, uh, Tisha, Tisha, Vansh, uh, Dia, wrong answer. Please get the logic what is happening. It's very simple. Just very carefully observe the row or the column, either. Pratvi, Prisha, wrong answer. Yana, wrong answer. One correct answer. Pushi, correct answer. Trisha, wrong answer. Mahi, wrong answer. Sanchi, wrong answer. All right, sure. let's see. Let's solve this together. I'm first going in this case from row wise. I'm first going row wise here. Okay. What is happening in the row is if I look at the first figure and the second figure here. And of course, the third figure is the resultant of the two. Where what happens is the, <clears throat> the there are two parts to it. One is the middle part, which is this one. And one is the outer part, which is the hexagon. What happens is in the third figure, when I look at the outer part, which is the hexagon, all the parts, it's an addition which is happening between. Uh, so the third figure will be a combination of first and second outer figure. So ye wala jo aapka part hai, this comes here from the first figure. This comes here from the second and of course from the second and uh, the first figure both both these lines the top line comes from the second figure only and this edge comes from also the second figure so the outer figure is a combination of one and two while when i look at the inner part the inner part is the intersection it's just the inner part is just the intersection so if i compare this inner part and one inner part of one and two together what i find is this is a common part which is seen here. This part and this part is common. Or ye part common. Hai. This part is common, this part is common, this part is common, and this part is common between one and two. So in the resultant third figure, I get the same thing. Now I will cross check this relationship in the second row or the row B, and I'm saying row A. 
So here also, if I combine the mid intersection in the middle, this is common, which is what is given here, which is true for one and two both. And the outer part is a combination of all the lines which are there, which is also happening. Henceforth, in, the, in this figure, which is the C row, if I look at it, I will get the whole hexagon as it is. The whole hexagon will come because yaha pe ye uh, five sided hexagon hai aur ye part yaha se uska borrow hoga which will come here so that's why full hexagon will come and the intersection of the inner part in one and two it's just this much sorry it's just this much henceforth the correct option will be option b now if I go, uh, if I do this, if I try solving this, one second, I'm just. If I try solving this even column wise, vertically, where I say column one, two, and three are there, in the column one, let's try this. In the in the column one. If I look at the intersection between A and B parts in column one, the intersection is this blue part, which I've drawn here, which is seen here. And even when you combine this, this, when this comes from this part and then this comes from this part, I get this figure, which is seen here very easily. Henceforth, even that same relationship follows also vertically. Besides following it row-wise, it also follows column-wise. So in either of the case, your option B will be the correct one. Is that clear? Any doubts, any questions? Okay, we'll move to the next one. Here, you are given some kind of a 3D figure, which is shown in your, on the left, uh, on the left side. What you have to find is when this becomes the front part, not this part, but the other part, when this becomes a front, what will be the top front and the left view? What will be the top, front, and the left view when you look at it from the front side, which is the arrow shown here? Please write your answer in the chat box, okay? Address just to me. Anshi Rudra, wrong answer. Tanvi, wrong answer. Twisha, wrong answer. Ashvi, wrong answer. Mahi, wrong answer. Man, correct answer. Tisha, Kushpu, wrong answer. Pratvi, correct answer. Heer, uh, Shujal, Tanvi, wrong answer. Pisha one, Shashvi, Kushbu, wrong answer. Please observe the options very carefully. It's right there in front of you. You don't have to think much. Your answer is there itself. What is happening today? Chalo. Mm. One wrong answer. Please note your front is this. There would be some lines which are missing here. Please note that. In the cube, there might be some lines which are missing, which you have to assume. Rudraksh Tisha, correct answer. Anshi, correct answer. Tvisha, wrong answer. Ria, wrong answer. All right, Chalo. Let's do this. When this becomes my front part, the cube that I am looking at 
is that okay that is my cube when this becomes my front part sorry one second let's do this here when the part becomes my front part the front will be horizontal lines which is this lines this is the front which is made up of all horizontal lines the top part which is this box even that is made up of horizontal lines And the left part, which is this. Uh, yeah. This is my left part, which will be the left part will be made up of inclined lines, in which case. Now, if I observe the options very carefully, the inclined lines okay, will be coming here. If I observe the options very carefully, the condition where I get this three, is happening in C as well as in D. A and B are wrong outright without any thought. Between C and D, the only thing which is different is the left part. One is dense and one is little bit sparse. So what I will do is I'll count the number of lines which are there. It has one, two, and three. Between the edge, I have one, two, and three points versus let me just erase this yeah versus if i observe the number of in uh sorry yeah versus if i observe the number of lines which are there here maybe one two three four five six which can be seen here one two, three, four, five, and six. Henceforth, C will be the correct answer and not, uh, sorry, henceforth, D will be the correct answer and not C. Is that clear? Any doubts, any questions in this? Okay, fine. Let's move to the next one then. Here you are given a diagram sample on your left side. What you are provided is certain uh, figures which are made using tan using the diagram option. What you have to guess from this is which of the following composition is made by just rearranging the diagram figure. Uh, flipping and scaling is not allowed, which is clearly mentioned. You can rotate the piece whichever way you want, but you cannot flip nor you can uh, rotate the pieces which is provided, which are uh, the pieces which are provided to you. Uh, yeah, one more thing in this case, one or more option is possible, okay? And most of the, okay, before you start answering, just give me one minute. Before you start answering, just remember in the diagram puzzle, start with counting the sizes, start with looking at the size proportion. So, for example, in this case, I know that the bigger triangle, there are two bigger triangles. There are two smaller triangles. I'll just write three and four. The three and four are two smaller triangles of same size. And this triangle, the fifth triangle, will be of a different shape. And then there will be a rhombus. 
in most of the tangram puzzles you can solve it very easily just by going about this relative proportion where you get two big size uh, triangles one medium size and two small size triangles just by observe finding that you will be able to de uh, deduct certain answers after that even if you are left with a lot of options the next part would be to actually look at the rhombus the rhombus in the tangram it has to be in this direction in many cases in many many a times in these kind of questions the rhombus is flipped the rhombus is the only figure in the tangram puzzle which is possible to flip otherwise all other shapes like the triangle and the square if you flip it it does not matter but if you flip a rhombus you will immediately get to know that a rhombus is flipped okay uh, in this case, just by observing the relative proportion, you'll get the answer. But in this case, in this option, in this uh, uh, question, you don't have to go till the extent of finding the rhombus. Uh, one or more option is possible. Many of you have answered only one answer, but uh, Pratvi, uh, one correct answer. Here, uh, Man, Mahi, Anshi, Tisha, Tanvi, Kushi. Tuisha Ria, uh, partially correct answer. Yana, partially correct answer. Uh, they are wrong answer. Shrujal, correct answer. Rudraksh, partially correct answer. Sanchi, correct answer. Ashvi, wrong answer. Tanvi, wrong answer. Just compare the sizes. Two big triangles. Two small triangles and one medium sized triangles. Kushbu, uh, Manya, wrong answer. Kushbu, the correct answer, which is updated, that's the correct one. In this case, just if I start looking at the triangles, I start first with the two bigger triangles. In option B, I don't find the big triangle. I just find one big triangle. In option C also, I find one big triangle. In option A and D, I find the two triangles. No problem. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, I have missed. I've done a mistake here. Sorry. Um, forget the correct answer thing, which I just said. Okay. With option D, there are two rhombus, which is also not possible. So that leaves us with all, just option A. I'm sorry, I did a mistake. I got confused with something. And uh, yeah, I did a mistake here. Uh, so whatever I've said to correct or wrong answer, please forget it. But option D will be wrong. Okay. Or only option A is the one where you find uh, all the pieces and all the pieces in the correct order. Any doubts, any questions in this? So in this case, the correct answer is option A. Those who are given option A, that's the correct answer. Okay. We'll move to the next. Okay. So in this case, uh, you're given four different graphs. What you have to find is which of the graph correctly represents x raised to y is equal to 25. You have to find which graph is the correct representation. One or more option is possible. It's MSQ based question, which means it, there's a possibility that one or more graph is correct. What you have to guess is which is the correct representation. Um, um, just try answering. I need to pick up this phone. I'm sorry. Uh, man partially correct answer.
Sanchi, uh, Sanchi, uh, Tanvi, Twesha, Rudra, Shrishab, uh, wrong answer. Chalo, let's, let's do this, okay? Chalo. In the, uh, let's take the case of option A first. Most of you are given that, but irrespective. So in this case, if I observe when x becomes 0, y tends to go to infinity. So the equation which comes about in that case is 0 raised to infinity is equal to 25. One of the possibilities. So when x becomes 0, y raised y becomes, I'll just write it here. When x is 0, which is here, where the blue line comes, y becomes infinity according to the blue line. And hence, the answer should be 25. This is not possible because we know anything multiplied by 0 will result into 0. So this option is not possible. With case of option B, it's the alternate situation where x is infinity and y becomes here. At this juncture, at this juncture, x is infinity and y is equal to 0. So infinity raised to 0 will be equal to 25 is what the blue line shows which is also not possible because anything raised to 0 will be equal to 1. x raised to 0 is always 1. And that x value can be anything. So even this is not possible. So option B is also wrong. The next part, we come here. So in either of the cases, x or y cannot be equal to 0 is what we have established so far where x cannot be equal to 0, so because 0 raised to infinity cannot equal to 25, nor in the other case, infinity raised to 0 will be equal to uh, 25, not possible, because anything to the power 0 is 1, or and anything multiplied by 0 is also 0, that's why. So A and B, we have removed from there, from that basis, on that basis. When it comes to option C, what we get is, we see, you see this gap here, we also see this gap here, which means there is neither of the values of x or y are 0. Further, when I extrude this part here on this side, this will approximately equal to 2, which means 5 to the power 2 is equal to 25. Also, when I extrude the line which is of infinity downstairs, it will come to one about one point something, two, three, whatever, whatever this something will be. But it will be one point something raised to infinity will be equal to 25. So this kind of situation is also quite possible. So I'll say C is possible that way. In the next case which of uh, D, we are fine with the top part. The upper part, which we have already established from C, is fine. There is no problem with the upper part. The issue happens is when we just have to ch check the negative part. So we say 0 0.5, which is the value of x, raised to a, some kind of higher value, will be equal to 25. So 1 by 2 raised to infinity or some higher value will be equal to 25. In this case, if this value of y, I'm just writing y here. If this value of y, which has to be infinity or higher or any higher value, uh, if that value is uh, in negative, only in that case, the denominator will come be, will become the numerator. Henceforth, this equation from that basis, I have established that this equation, this graph is also possible of D. And uh, I mean, I don't want to get into checking this part, but 
just from that basis, we established that yes, white uh, being negative is quite a possibility. And that value, if you very correctly observe, and if I extrapolate this, it will tend to be between zero and one. This part is will tend to be between zero and one. So that's why I have taken 0 0.5 here. So any value between zero and one to the power, to a higher power or infinity will result in negative, will result into the answer 25, which is possible with D also. So in this case, the correct answer is one second, C and D. Any doubts, any questions in this? Okay, I'll explain. So in the case of, one second. So in the case of D, we from the, sorry, from option C, we have already established that this part of the curve, upper curve in D is correct. We just need to check whether or not negative values of y are possible for any smaller value of x. Now, in this case, the smaller value of x, if I observe this part, the smaller, and I extrude, extrapolate this part here, this smaller value of x will be between 0 and 1 based on this extrapolation, this point which comes out. Now, between 0 and 1, if it is going to be, if that value is going to be in point 0 0.2, for example, or 0 0.5 in this case that I've taken, anything with decimal and if you multiply it, you will get a lower value. So 0 0.5 ka square if I'm putting up. So if I say 0 0.5 raised to 2, the answer that I will get is 0 0.25, which is a lesser number compared to this number, 0 0.5. Henceforth, uh, I will say if y, which is, uh, or the power which is given here, if that value is in negative, so in this case, 0 0.5 to the power minus 2, if it is given, it will come to uh, 2 raised to 2 or 1 like it can also be written like that this equation can also be written like that this will equal to the option to the answer four so what i get is in order to get a higher value of the square if only y is negative becomes negative only then i get there's a possibility that i can get 25 in x raised to y equation in this equation if x is in decimals. Decimals, why? Because I have already established that the value of x based on the blue curve will be between 0 and 1. Between 0 and 1, it obviously will be a negative number or uh, I'm sorry, it, it will obviously be a decimal number. Now, if it is a decimal number, even if I do a positive square to it, it, uh, it, it will give me a lower number. I've already established that based on this equation here. 0.5 square will be 0 0.25, which is 0 0.25 is a less is less number compared to 0 0.5, which means more number of multiplication, the decimal will keep on going backward. So in order to have a higher number here, I will have to have a negative y value uh, uh, in the power because what happens is when you have a negative y value, uh, it becomes inverse, right? Upper negative hota hai, then you have to inverse the equation. So 0 0.5 will also be written as 1.2 raised to minus 2. And this you when you negate when you when the negative uh, comes at play, this can also be written as 2 square upon 1 square because it's negative because the power is negative, you will have to invert that. Hence, fourth, the answer will come to 4. So in this case, what I establish is 0 0.5 raised to infinity or some kind of a higher number, which is coming here, which is what the blue curve is showing here, uh, will result in me getting 25. That's how I have established, uh, okay, D is correct. Anshi, uh, I hope I've answered uh, your query. I don't know. Is it clear to you? All right.
Any doubts, any questions? Okay. Move to the next one. So, uh, yeah. What you're given here is you're given some combination of pulleys. The pulleys are fixed. Uh, if a triangular weight is applied here in this direction, which means the, ro the rope will be pulled down because the weight is applied here. How many pulleys will rotate in the same direction as the smallest pulley, including itself? The overlapping paths, they do not interfere with each other. You have to get it irrespective of it. You don't need to worry about the weight. You just have to worry about which, how many pulleys will rotate in the same direction as the smallest pulley. The smallest pulley is this pulley in this case. First, before you do anything, please establish whether the smallest pulley is rotating clockwise or anti-clockwise. First, move about the whole thing or while you are tracing the origins, just trace by saying which is clockwise, which is anti-clockwise. And then once you reach the smallest pulley, irrespective of whether it is clockwise or anti-clockwise, just count the direction in which the pulley is rotated. Start from the sequence. This weight is moving down, which means this will be rotating in this direction, which is anti-clockwise. If this rotates in this direction, the rope moves in this direction, which means ye aise move karega, which is again anti-clockwise. This is anti-clockwise, which means ye wala jo aapka rope hai, wo aise move karega. This rope has to move up. And this has to rotate in this direction. Again, anti-clockwise. So, so far what I've established is the smallest pulley will be moving in anti-clockwise direction. So, it will be moving clockwise direction, not anti-clockwise. This is clockwise. Uh, this is also clockwise. I mistook it. This is anti-clockwise. E. This is moving like this, and this is moving like this clockwise, which means the anti clockwise pulley ye bhi hoga, ye bhi anti clockwise hoga. Ye dono anti clockwise honge. Uh, Rudrash, correct answer. Aditya, wrong answer. Shrujal, wrong answer. Shrujal, you have to trace everything, all the pulleys. You have not traced all the pulleys. Rishabh, correct answer. He wrong answer. Sanvi wrong answer, Sanchi correct answer. Let's do this, okay? So I know I have reached the smallest pulley right now. I have so far established that two of the pulleys are moving in clockwise direction. Now what I'm looking at is clockwise. 
I don't have to worry about anti-clockwise. So this pulley is moving in clockwise direction. The rope will be pulled in this direction. Hence, this will be moving in anti-clockwise direction. This is moving in anti-clockwise direction like that, which means the rope will have to move in this direction if this is moving because it's a looped connection here. So ye anti-clockwise mega. So ye rope aapka ye direction mein pull hoga, which means ye aapka clockwise hoga. So this will be the third move pulley, which will be in clockwise direction. Now I know this, since this pulley is moving in this direction, the rope will be pulled in this direction, which means the rope will have to move in this direction. So this is anti-clockwise. I don't have to count that. This is anti-clockwise. This rope is getting pulled in this direction. Ye yaha se pull hoga. Ye clockwise move karega, which means ye wala pulley aapka. So this is your fourth pulley, which is moving in clockwise direction. Now this pulley is, this rope is getting pulled in this direction. Ye wala rope. If only this rope is getting pulled in this direction, this will move rotate clockwise. So ye aise move karega, which means this has to move like this, which means this pulley will be anti-clockwise. Ye aise move karega. So, so far so good. So now this pulley is moving in this direction anti-clockwise, which means ye wala rope aapka, because it's moving in anti-clockwise direction, ye wala rope aapka ye direction mein move karega. If this rope is getting pulled in this direction, which, which means this pulley, one second, this rotates like this, this rotates like this. And this will have to move like this. So it is clockwise. This is the one, two, three, four, fifth one. Fifth one, yeah, sorry, sorry. This is clockwise, this is the fifth one. This pulley is moving in this direction. This rope will have to move upward if it is moving in clockwise direction, essay continuously. So ye upward move karega ye wala rope yaha se. This rope, if it is moving upward in this direction, this pulley will also be moving in clockwise direction. So this will be the sixth one. This pulley is moving in clockwise direction on that side. So essay. So this rope will have to move in this direction. It's a loop correction. Ye wala rope ye direction mein move karega. Which means ye aise move karega. Ye anti-clockwise hai. So this is not, I'm not counting that. Ye anti-clockwise move karega. So this rope will have to be pulled upward. If this rope is pulled upward, then this have to move in anti-clock, in clockwise direction. So six or so seven. This is seventh one so far established. This is in clockwise direction. This rope will be pushed, pulled back in this direction. Ye wala, ye direction mein rope pull hoga. This rope is getting pulled in this direction, which means ye aise move karega, ye anti-clockwise. I don't have to count that. This is anti-clockwise. This rope is getting pulled here. This is also anti-clockwise. This is anti-clockwise. As I move ahead, Ye aise move, ye rope aise move karega, ye rope aise move karega, which means this will move in this direction. So this will be seven and eight, eight, right? This is correct. Now this is anti-clockwise, sorry, this is clockwise. So yaha se ye direction mein jayega. So this rope will move in this direction upward. So ye aise move karega, to ye anti-clockwise move karega fully. This is anti-clockwise. So this rope will also move, this rope which is there will move downward. Yeah, anti-clockwise move kar hai. So this will pull it out itself. So this is moving downward. This is moving downward, which means ye bhi anti-clockwise move karega fully. So I'm not counting that. This is anti-clockwise movement. This pulley which is connected here, that will rotate in this direction towards the upper pulley. Ye wala rotate aise karega. So ye rotate aise karega. So ye clockwise ho jayega aapka. So ninth. 
ये क्लॉक वाइज होगा सो so, ये ऐसे मूव करेगा सॉरी ये क्लॉक वाइज है ड्राइंग अ डिफरेंट डायरेक्शन ये क्लॉक वाइज है सो ये नाइन्थ है सो इफ दिस इज क्लॉक वाइज मूविंग इन दिस डायरेक्शन दिस रोप विल बी पुल्ड इन दिस डायरेक्शन दिस रोप इज पुल्डिंग दिस डायरेक्शन तो ये वाला क्लॉक वाइज मूव करेगा टेन ये क्लॉक वाइज मूव करेगा ये रोप ये डायरेक्शन में पुल होगा दिस रोप इज पुल्ड इन दैट डायरेक्शन सो दिस विल आल्सो बी क्लॉक वाइज इलेवन दिस इज क्लॉक वाइज दिस रोप विल बी पुल्ड इन दिस डायरेक्शन ये वाला विच मींस ये ऐसे मूव करेगा एंटी क्लॉक ये ऐसे मूव करेगा सो दिस विल आल्सो मूव इन एंटी क्लॉक वाइज डायरेक्शन दिस इज मूविंग इन एंटी क्लॉक वाइज दिस रोप इज टेटिक अप हियर दिस इज शिफ्टिंग इन दिस डायरेक्शन सो दिस इज आल्सो एंटी क्लॉक वाइज नॉट टू बी काउंटेड और ये एंटी क्लॉक वाइज है विच मींस दिस वेट इज गोइंग टू गो अपवर्ड इसमें ऐसा भी पूछ सकते हैं गिविंग दिस कॉम्प्लेक्स सिस्टम वेदर और नॉट दिस वेट विल मूव अपवर्ड और डाउनवर्ड so this weight will be moving upward and there will be 11 uh pulleys who are moving in the same direction as the smallest pulley which is in clockwise direction any doubts any questions in this any doubts questions okay chalo we move to the next one yeah this is associated the question associated to barter system combination and how one person can extract more number of toffees from other person other two people what you are given here is uh bithapur works on a barter system which is a place each person there loves different sweets Mukund is willing to exchange two toffees for a lolly lollipop, three ice creams for a toffee. Ranjan Ranjana is willing to exchange one ice cream for two lollipops and three toffees for a lollipop. Mukund and Ranjana they don't know each other, but both of them know Sita who loves toffee. There's a third person. Sita has one lollipop. She just has one lollipop, nothing else. She can meet Ranjan and Mukund only once. Uh, not necessarily that she will have to meet Ranjan first and then she will meet Mukund. The order is not necessary. What is the maximum number of toffees can Sita get by exchange in barter system? खुशबू रॉन्ग आंसर ट्विशा रिया नाइशी ट्विशा ट्विशा रॉन्ग आंसर लेट्स जस्ट राइट ओके फर्स्ट लेट मी राइट द इक्वेशन इक्वेशन डज नॉट मीन यू स्टॉप Tisha, Tisha, Adit, Mahi, wrong answer. And there is other guy, uh, Mahi, Ranjana, Adit girl. One ice cream and two lollipop, or three toffees and one 
lollipop. She's willing to exchange this much. Udraksh Mahi, wrong answer. Rishabh, correct answer. Kritisha, uh, wrong answer. Akshish, uh, Ashwi, wrong answer. Visha, wrong answer. Rudraksh, correct answer. Chalo. Let's just do this, okay? Chalo. So in this case, and then this girl Sita, I'm just writing Sita has just one lollipop. And she wants maximum toffees. She wants this. She wants maximum toffee. How do we maximize toffees here? What would be the conversion be? We take a case where this woman, she, uh, she goes to Ranjan directly. For uh, one lolly, uh, one second. Here is lollipop toffee conversion. Yeah, she, yeah. So in this case, we take the first case where she goes to Ranjana directly and she exchanges one lollipop with three toffees, which is a straightforward situation. But she won't be able to maximize on the toffees because she wants toffees. She does not want ice cream or any lollipops, okay? So we, we say three is possible, but three is a short, uh, sort of, uh, less answer. Is there any possibility where she can maximize beyond three? In other case, we say, okay, she does not go to Ranjana first, but she goes to Mukund first. Sita, she goes to Mukund first. In the first case... This is case one, where she goes with uh, Ranjana first, in which case she gets three toffees. In case two, she goes to Mukun first. First, uh, and then she exchanges uh, toffees with lollies because Mukun can give her... Uh, uh, so for one... Uh, sorry. Uh, she'll get two toffees and one lollipop. Or in an alternate situation, now I'm also thinking, Chalo, what if in the first situation only, Chalo, let's, let's take the first situation with Ranjana. When she gets three, uh, what should I say? Three toffees. Okay, she's getting three toffees in the first situation. I'm just trying this. I don't know whether or not how will I be able to reach here, but let me try this once. So, uh, she gets she goes to Ranjana first. She gets three toffees, and then she exchanges those toffees with Mukun for three ice creams. So, in return, chalo. First case situation. Um. How do I write it? Um, uh, chalo. Ranjana. Sita. And Mukun. Okay. So Sita exchanges one uh, toffee with Ranjana for... Uh, sorry, one lollipop with Ranjana for three toffees. Then, uh, so she gets three toffees instead of uh, one lollipop. That's the conversion. Then this woman, she goes to Mukun and she exchanges using this three. She gets three ice cream and one toffee. Uh, using this equation, she gets nine ice cream. 
Now, if I go back to this equation and I get, um, this is Ranjana, yeah. So using this equation, yeah, so this conversion will be nine ice creams. From nine ice cream, using the conversion of one ice cream to two lollipops with Ranjana, I again go back to Ranjana, I exchange it for one ice cream and two lollipop. And what I get is this converts to nine into two, 18 uh, lollipops. This converts to 18 lollipops. These 18 lollipops, I then go back to Mukund and I convert it to two toffees. I using this equation of one lollipop equals two toffees. I convert 18, uh, 18 uh, lollipops to 18 into two, 36 toffees. This 36 toffees, I can again follow this whole method again and I can keep on multiplying. That is possible. But is there any bracket provided? Not both of them need Sasita as only one. She can meet Ranjana only once. Okay, this is the one case where she's so she can meet both of them only once. This is one condition. So in the case here where that repetition will keep on happening is not possible. In the second case, let's take a second case. So, ye 36 ka bhi aap, uh, double kar sakte ho, multiply by 12 or, you know, uh, it, it can keep on compounding. But we are given a condition. In this case, she is meeting Mukun twice. So, ye wala condition possible nahi hai. So, in this case, that conversion will... If I say that she's meeting them only once, that conversion will actually end here at nine ice creams only. So this first case is not possible. In the second case, Chalo, she exchanges uh, toffees and lollipops. She has one lollipop. She... Uh, She using one lollipop, she gets two toffees. So, chalo, let's write it like this only. Mukund, Sita, and Ranjana. Sita right now has one lollipop. Using the equation of two toffees and one lollipop, she exchanges it with two toffees. Okay. Now, Using the second equation with Mukund, staying there itself. She is meeting Mukund once only and she is with Mukund yet. The meeting has not ended with Mukund. Using that other equation of three, of sorry, one toffee is equal to three ice cream. She converts this toffee into uh, six ice creams then after converting it into six ice cream then she goes to ranjana ranjana offers her one ice cream for two lollipops and one lollipop for two hours so i will first go with the ice cream conversion using the ice cream conversion of one ice cream is equal to two lollipops this girl women will get uh, six into two 12 lollipops. Using the second conversion of three toffees is equal to one lollipop. This, so this woman give, will give her 12, toff, 12 lollipops and in return she will get 36 uh, toffees. This is other possible. Nahi hai. And this is also not compounding further. It can compound, kar sakte ho, but then given the condition that she is meeting both of them only once, uh, 36 will be the maximum. In this case, the maximum, in the case one, the maximum toffee possible will be three. Or the maximum uh, possible exchange is nine ice creams. So 36 is, is the correct answer. Okay. Uh... Any doubt, any questions in this?
Any doubt, any questions? Okay. Uh, chalo, we'll move to the next one. Let's take one more. Let's take this one. It's very fairly simple. So, and we'll end this session. Okay. Uh, this is a case. Uh, okay. I will. I, I won't. I don't give the answer first. Try it on your own. You are given six pac man. They are joined hands to take revenge from this ghost. They are standing around in a circular formation. Lo and behold, a white star full of pure light emerges in the center. In complete disbelief, the Pac-Man are mesmerized. Which of the gestalt laws of perception explain the appearance of the star in the center? I don't know if everybody is able to perceive the star or not, but the mouth of the Pac-Man actually cre is cre actually creating the star. One or more option is possible in this case. Please look at what is the Gestalt's law of perception first. And then try answering the answer, uh, question. You have to guess which of the Gestalt law of perception explains the appearance of the star in the center. Proximity, continuity, figure and ground and closure. Uh, Ria partially correct answer. Aditya, wrong answer. Ashwi, correct answer. Anya, wrong answer. Tisha, wrong answer. Kashvi, Diya, wrong answer. Uh, Kushbu, wrong answer. Okay, in this case, the correct answer is proximity, continuity, and closure. So, figure and ground won't be the possibility in this case because of this part. It, of course, explains the perception of the star. Uh, but in case of figure and ground, we are able to perceive both the figure as well as the ground. In this case, the figure is the star, which is seen here. The figure is the star, which is seen here. But it, in this case, it is also the Pac-Man, which are very clearly observed. We just have to guess which, uh, guess the principle which suggests the appearance of the star and not the uh, and not how what this whole figure depicts. If we are given the very abstract question that what is what are the principles at play in the figure, then figure and ground will come. In case of figure and ground, what happens is uh, so you know you would have come across this kind of figure uh, of a wave kind of thing. What this kind of shows, uh, figure shows is, and this is all black, and this is also all black. What this shows is, uh, this, this kind of figure, you can also read a vase in the middle, and you can also perceive the faces on both the sides. Uh, Rishabh, you want to address it to somebody else, okay? Um, your you can also perceive the figure here. You can also perceive the face here, and you can also perceive the waist, which is seen in white. In this case, I am not concerned about the Pac-Man. I am just concerned about the appearance of the star in the center. If the question which have been asked was, "What are the principles at play in the figure which is provided here?" Then all four will come. But in this case, I just have to explain the appearance of the star in the middle. Henceforth, proximity, continuity, and closure will come. And figure and ground won't be possible. Any doubt, any questions? All right.
Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next session.